Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're gonna take a look at two brand new watches from AV8. But they're not just any watches from AV8. There's something a little different and a little special about these two, as these limited edition watches were created in a collaboration with the Royal British Legion. Now, as an American, I'm not very familiar with the Royal British Legion. In fact, when I got the email asking if I'd do the review, my very first thought was that I'm really busy and I really shouldn't take on another project. But I started looking into who they are, and found out they're a rather large and worthwhile organization out of the UK. One which is dedicated to helping veterans and their families. Which is something I can always get behind. So I figured I should make time to do this, as either 15 or 10 pounds from each watch sold will be donated directly to the Royal British Legion. Now, in full disclosure, both of these watches were given to the channel and they're not going to ask for them back. But since the whole point of this is to help veterans, it doesn't feel quite right just to hold on to them. So I figured the best thing I can do is to help spread the word by doing a giveaway. So stay tuned and at the end, I'll tell you you can win one of these watches. In the meantime, let's just get to it. Now, first off, AV8 has given these watches some rather long names. I mean, like ridiculously long names. So just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to refer to this one as the Founder's Chronograph, and this one as the Chairman. The Founder's Chrono has more of a retro styling, whereas the Chairman is sort of this pilot dive watch hybrid thing, which is maybe in the same spirit as the Sporks. They both have the same overall case design. It's rather simple and rather straightforward looking. So there's nothing really complicated here going on with the case. Overall, I'd say it's decent for the price, and that's even with some sharp edges on the bottom of it. The Founder's Chrono is 40mm wide, with a lug-to-lug -lug of 48.7, which isn't bad, but it is a tad thick at 13mm, at least for a quartz watch, and it is 13 from the screwed-down case back to a slightly domed mineral crystal. The Chrono also has a 20mm lug width, a rather minimal 50 meters of water resistance, and it's all powered by Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement. Now, on the off chance you've never heard of Mecha Quartz, it is still primarily a quartz-based movement. But it's one that's supplemented with a bunch of mechanical gears, and those all control the chronograph. So it's sort of this hybrid design. One that was made with the idea that it gives you the reliability of quartz, but still maintains the smooth sweep and feel of a mechanical chronograph. With this particular movement, it's worth pointing out that there's no running second hand for the time. Rather, the only second hand on the dial is the center seconds, and that's there for the chronograph. Now, even though the cases between these two models is similar, they aren't identical. The black PVD coated chairman is still 40 millimeters wide, but it does have a slightly shorter lug to lug at 48. The case itself also has a much slimmer profile, as it's only 11.5 millimeters from the case back to the top of the bezel. But that is the bezel, and there's a rather curved mineral crystal sitting on top of this thing. And with that very pronounced crystal, it actually winds up being taller of the two at 13.8. The crystal also makes the watch rather reflective, as that high angle just seems to catch a lot of light around it, and that winds up washing out a bit of the dial. Some of this, I think, is very apparent in these shots, and you will notice it. The chairman also shares the chronograph's 50 meters of water resistance. And while that's not ideal with the chronograph, I think it is more acceptable there. Whereas here, with this case that looks more like a diver, 50 millimeters is just kind of odd, and that makes it seem even more inadequate. Now, the chairman also utilizes a Seiko VH31 movement, which is something I've seen and reviewed in the past. For whatever reason, AV8 has decided to call this a Mecha Quartz movement, and I'm not entirely sure that's accurate, as I've never heard anyone refer to this movement as that before. Most of the time, they just call it a sweeping quartz, which some people may argue against, but this does have four ticks per second as it goes around the dial. And compared to a standard traditional quartz of one tick per second, I'd say four ticks is more of a smoother movement. Now, with this 2 hertz movement, there is going to be a hit to battery life, and I think here it's maybe only 2 years. But even with that, I think this movement is still pretty cool, and I would like to see more of them. Just because that constant movement does seem to reduce or nullify any misalignment of the second hand. Now, one thing I want to compliment AV8 on is the use of a standard screw-down case back, which is kind of odd to compliment someone for doing what I consider to be normal. With the chronograph, this case back would be expected, 
but at a price of 150, maybe even 120 after a discount, with this three-hander, it wouldn't be unheard of to have a snap-on case back. So I'm glad to see that EV8 kept things normal here, especially with that shorter battery life. I also really like what they did with the crowns here. Now, they aren't screwed down, which is something I would prefer, but they do use a good-looking onion-shaped crown that is then sort of trimmed off at the top, just so that they could encase the Royal British Legion's logo in epoxy. A few people saw this on my Instagram and actually thought it was a red 8 for AP8, but it is actually a red poppy, which is the logo for the Royal British Legion. And that poppy is also present on both dials. The other major difference between these two watches can be found in the bezels. The Founders Chrono, of course, has a very clean stainless bezel, whereas the Chairman has this diving-style timer bezel, which is something you would expect on a diver, but once again, it only has 50 meters of water resistance. But this winds up giving the watch a bit of a dive pilot hybrid design, which is a little odd, but also a little cool at the same time. But personally, if I was going to go this route, I think a 12-hour dual-time bezel would have been better than the 60-minute, as I think it just makes more sense for a pilot. But timing bezels are more common and maybe more popular, so I'm guessing that's why they went with it. Although, either way you look at it, the action of that bezel is pretty good. It is a bit stiff and maybe hard to get a hold of if you're reaching on the sides rather than in between the lugs. But there's very minimal backplay here, and it has this really sharp defined click as you turn it. Now, one quick word about the crystals before we move on to the dials. The crystals here are mineral, and that is a bit disappointing. I think at this point we all would prefer and like to see sapphire and everything. But at this price range, mineral isn't unheard of, so I can only complain about that so much. Let's move on to the dials, and let's start things off with the simpler chairman. The dial here has this matte black coloring, which also has a grainy texture to it. And this is a type of dial that is rather typical with Aviate watches, as well as their sister brand Spinnaker, where it seems to be this all-in-one molded design that is complete with indices that rise out of it, which depending on the color used with the dial, they can look rather good or look a little plasticky. Now, with this particular colorway, I think the dial looks mostly good, but the raised indices with that off-yellow coloring to me look like they were more made by Mattel. Now, while the case is more reminiscent of a diver, the dial is more Flieger-like, and specifically a Flieger Type A configuration, which is complete with a complicated chapter ring on the outer edge of the dial. Although one deviation from that design is that the bars at the cardinal points are a bit wider and more emphasized, giving the whole thing a bit of a crosshair effect, which is something I like and something that's much more noticeable as it gets darker. So, kind of a modified Flieger, but as you move inward, AV does something a little odd and kind of throws a little bit of a field watch in here, as they decided to include these smaller red 24-hour markings, which is then all topped off with the AV8 logo at the top and the Royal British Legion poppy at the bottom, as well as a little bit of flavor text at the very bottom and the top, some of which, as I said, I'm still not convinced is correct. Then, just to emphasize that pilot-dive hybrid thing, Instead of the typical Flieger hands, they use these pencil-shaped hands with these longer, finer tips. Which I think would normally look great, but unfortunately with this blacked-out configuration, it's kind of hard to see that extended tip of those hands. It just really blends into the darker background. And as a result, the hands look a little short for this particular watch, even though they aren't. Then, for whatever reason, they decided to add an orange second hand to this particular configuration. Now, I do like the splash of color here, but I think the hand should be red. Now, overall at face value, I think the chairman with its stealthy black design is a rather cool looking watch. But it's one where the more I look at the details and really focus in, the more I see things that don't really make sense to me. And things that may have been done just to push form over function. Such as the 50 meters of water resistance and not being able to clearly see the tip of the hands as well as that glare that's coming off the crystal. The thing is, most people don't really laser focus on things like I do, so maybe this analysis is a bit unfair, as considering the price, I'm nitpicking this thing pretty hard. But bottom line is that I think it's a great looking watch, but one that I'm not a big fan of. For me, the Chronograph is the better looking watch by far. One of my favorite watches is the Hamilton Intramatic, so I'm already a fan of this bi-compact design. 
And here, Aviate gave it a little bit of a retro twist with the off yellow paint and cathedral hands. Like the chairman, the dial here is a textured black with indices rising out of it. But I don't think this one looks quite as plasticky around the Arabics. Moving to the very outer edge, you see that the dial has a series of two chapter rings. You have an inner yellow sloped ring that contains a detailed minute track, which also seems to frame the black center dial, which in turn is then further framed by a tachometer in black. I'm sure they didn't originate it, but I do like this dual chapter ring setup, as they're both very easy to make out, and it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. On either side of the watch, you do have the chronograph subdials, which are both complete with a detailed train track chapter ring. The one at the 9 is for minutes elapsed, and the one at the 3 is a 24 hour dial. And just to emphasize it again here, there is no running seconds for the time. That center seconds in the middle of the dial is for the chronograph, and for some that may be an issue, especially because that 24 hour subdial isn't the most useful. Moving down to the 6, you also have a basic cutout for the date, which does seem to complicate an already crowded dial but it does add some functionality without sacrificing any symmetry at that position. And since the dial is pretty crowded, there really isn't any room here for that Royal Legion poppy. So instead, they wound up putting it as a counterweight for the second hand, which I think at first glance is a little odd and distracting. But I think once you realize what it is and why it's there, you do come to appreciate it, as it is sort of the whole purpose of these watches, and it is a nice way to integrate it into the design. So, as you can see, I do like the design of the chronograph a lot more. The chronograph is definitely a more complex design than that of the chairman, but it's one that I think makes more sense when you look at it, which ultimately makes it more usable. Now, as for the loom, well, when you see this off-yellow coloring on the indices, you kind of expect it to be just so-so. When we're talking in terms of longevity, we're talking Vostok levels. Which is bad if you're talking divers, but is sort of okay-ish if you're talking non-divers. So I think you could say that this is perfectly acceptable and perfectly acceptable for the price, but personally I'd like a lot more loom here. So that did disappoint a bit. However, the straps actually impressed me just a little bit, and especially when you compare these to what AV8 normally does. Now build-wise, there's nothing really special about them. They're a decent genuine leather strap that should last you a bit. The hardware here is also decent as well. However, the taper here is what I really appreciate about these straps, as they go from 20 millimeters at the watch head down to 16 at the buckle on one side, and then even a little bit further on the other side, which normally may not be a big deal, but Aviate straps are normally very big, thick, and just stand out with no taper at all. So it's nice to see that they're changing things up a bit here to something that is more comfortable to wear. Speaking of which, on the wrist they do feel good. On my 7 and a quarter inch wrist, a 40 millimeter width and a 48 millimeter lug is what I prefer, and these are right in there. Now because there isn't much of a slope to the lugs and they wind up sitting around the midpoint of the case, the watch does feel a little flat against the back of your wrist. But overall, it is still very comfortable and easily a watch you can wear throughout the day. Now, the MSRP for these is about 285 US for the chronograph and 150 for the three-hander. But as this is AV8, there are always discount codes floating around. There's an older one for the channel, and there's also one at the very top of their webpage giving you 20% off. And with that, you're looking at a price of 228 and 120 respectively, which isn't too bad for a Mecha Quartz Chrono but maybe a touch high for this three-hander, even with this sweeping quartz movement. So out of the two, the chronograph is definitely my favorite. The blacked out stealthy look of the chairman is pretty cool, but I think there is some function here that was sacrificed from the look. The biggest one for me is that there's only 50 meters of water resistance, and on a watch that looks like a diver, that's just kind of odd. But as long as you know what you're getting into, it is still a pretty cool looking watch whereas the Founder's Chronograph is just more me. Although I do wish that it had Sapphire, and I wish the loom was better, but it does have a great retro look with that bi-compact design and the cathedral hands. And those that watch the channel know I'm a sucker for cathedral hands. Now, as for the giveaway, well, I'm gonna run it like I do most of my other giveaways, which means that it is open mostly worldwide. The only real limitation here is that you have to live somewhere where the US Postal Service will let me actually mail to. 
It's hard to believe that we're almost two years into this whole thing and we're still having issues with mail, but that's just the way it is and there's nothing I can do about it. Checking out the US postal site right now, it actually says that mail is temporarily suspended to Australia and New Zealand for whatever reason, I have no idea. So just be aware of that because if I can't actually get it to you, I'm just gonna have to move on to another winner. Now, speaking of winners, there are going to be two, a first place and a second place winner. The first place winner will get to pick which one of these two watches they want, and the second place will get the remaining watch. Now, there's only one thing you have to do in order to enter the contest, and that's leave a comment down below and include somewhere in it hashtag relative time. So that is the only thing that is required, but if you are entering and you have the chance to share this video, I ask that you try to do so. And as the whole point of this is to help veterans, this holiday season, I do ask that you just think about how you might be able to do that, even if it's something like donating to the Royal British Legion, or if you're in the US, maybe the American Legion, or the Wounded Warrior Project. But once again, those aren't required, so no pressure, just think about it. Now, I'll let this go for a couple of weeks, pick a couple winners, and post them to my community tab. And that's it. Now, as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.